Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. Uh, we have a question from a fellow boater. Ed asks, Jeff, what mistakes have you made wiring your own boat so that everyone else can learn? Oh wow, I like it. I mean, I could talk about my boat. It's sort of, I don't have children. <laughs> I could talk about my boat forever. So for those of you that care to listen, and thank you, here goes. First thing, I would say planning. I think at the beginning, I was a little bit too gun ho to doing. And I thought that I could never forget anything I had ever done on my boat. And that I would remember everything I did. So planning and documenting is probably the biggest fault I did on my own boat. I thought that someone could never forget anything they did on their own boat. I was thinking it's too exciting. How could I ever forget anything? Now I've had my boat for 15 years and I've forgotten. And so I would say, yeah, documentation, diagram, sketches, labeling, all that stuff is super essential. And maybe today you think that tomorrow you won't forget, but I did. And my boat, it's a love affair, absolute love affair not near unconditional love and yet I forgot. So that's something that I would remind younger me to spare older me the pain of having to figure out what I did. Uh, and that's in labeling and also uh, doing really good documentation. So that's one thing. The planning, why I said planning at the beginning is because at the time I think I was always more thinking in terms of what I need to do this season. What am I going to do, you know, short term, not like tomorrow or today, but this season or a year or two. And I think with hindsight, there's a lot of things I did that had to be redone. Or for example, going through bulkheads where I would do a one inch cutout and then eventually I had to do another one inch cutout and then I had to find another hole. And eventually I had all these different bulkheads holes. And realistically, if I had done a three inch one and why didn't I, you know, like why spare it? There was room. Now I've got multiple holes. Sometimes that gets tricky. Sometimes you can't do another hole somewhere else. You got to remove the wiring from the existing hole, drill another hole, and they might be side by side, like two holes that sort of overlap, but it's not great. So I think that would have been a big thing is really start imagining where you're going to go with this boat and be honest with yourself. And when it comes to wire routing, just make sure that you actually create openings so that you won't have to do multiple holes to actually do everything. Because at the end of the day, you know, drilling multiple times is counterproductive. So, all right. So planning and labeling would have been the first two. Other ones that I did, um, and I remember this to the day, I remember prior to having this business, uh, being a boat owner, like being completely overwhelmed. It was sort of like the biggest life challenge I'd ever faced up to that point. It was unbelievably, incredibly humbling. And I remember I was tackling my windlass wiring and I came out from a chandlery and I, they had sold me two watt wiring. So two watt wiring, positive and negative, went on board, installed it, did the windlass. And one day I'm doing the connections at the windlass on the solenoid and I'm noticing that the lug fits differently. And I'm like, why would a two watt lock fit differently on a two watt cabling and another two watt cabling? At the chandlery, I had been sold two watt cabling but I had been giving a one aught black and a two aught red. So <laughs> I ran one aught on my boat. Having to redo it was a huge pain. It was painful. So what I learned is don't assume anything before you're gonna do something really long. The other thing I've done wrong is also for let's say enemy 2000, getting the wrong polarity, thinking a cable is a cable, not understanding that there's a male side and a female side. And if you're running cabling from A's to B's on a boat, the polarity of the connectors is really important because you don't want, you can't connect two males together. Now, of course, there's couplers. Yes, of course, you can cut the wiring. Yes, of course, you can do all that stuff. But the reality is, maybe I didn't have to. So if you're running electronics, make sure the ends of the cables, you know, I had assumed that both ends are the same. Wouldn't it be easier, you know? And then you just have connection points, but no, it's male to female, male to female. The other one too is probably fusing. Um, I would say, in hindsight, I started with glass and I went mix. I did glass fusing, blade fusing. Of course, the big stuff I do, you know, class T's you do, A and L you do. Um, yes, but at the beginning, I didn't choose a standard. You know, I had glass fuses and I had blade fuses. And in hindsight, I wish I sort of stuck to one. 
And realistically, as I get older, I wish younger me would have chosen blade fuses. Blade fuses are color coded. You know, every color has a, a rating. You don't have to read the labeling on the side of the glass fuse. Glass fuses break. I've been cut by them before. So I would have avoided glass fuses on my boat in hindsight. Now, as I install stuff, I remove everything and I go to blade fuses because again, it's color coordinated. I don't have to read a label. I don't have to, it's harder to see if the fuse is blown. The other thing too that I would have wished I did is when it comes to fusing, install fuse blocks. Right. And I was a little silly, you know, I would have fuse blocks that were at four or five and I would buy a six gang fuse block thinking, oh, I'm going to use, oh, I have one or two spare. I should have never done that. That was a waste. I should have gone, if I need four, put a 12 in. Sure enough. How many times did I end up changing a six for a 12 all the time or have two sixes instead of one 12? So you see, I was always thinking about the scale too immediate to today, not going and sort of now what I realize is look forward, look way beyond the season and the chain, the cost is limited, right? Think about when you're running cables between A and B's on boat. And sometimes that's really painful. Think about what you're going to do next season. So things I regret again is planning. I know I'm going to be doing that. Maybe run the wiring, but don't do the terminations, right? Because the pain is in running the wires a lot of times. So pre run wires for yourself so that you don't have to run the wire twice. So pre-running wires is something I'm a big advocate in. I certainly do that on my boat. I always think about, okay, maybe not this season, next season, but hey, if I'm going to run the wire, I might as well run whatever I need for the following seasons. And then it becomes just buying the equipment and or doing terminations. And um, probably making sure always, 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 and I, I'm a big advocate of this, having all the wire color coded. At the beginning, I have to admit, you know, when I started boating, you know, uh, I was told you don't need to worry about red and black, just buy black and put heat shrink connectors red where it's red and put yellow ones or black ones when it's black. I shouldn't have done that. I ended up changing all that. I wasn't comfortable with that. Now it's a, you know, it's a personal decision, but given a choice, it's a little bit more expensive, of course, to buy two reels of something, right? Now you've got to buy a reel for red and a reel for yellow. But in hindsight, I wish that I didn't just buy a black reel of cabling and then cut it and then put heat shrink on it. Um, I've seen some failures there. And again, some people do it. It's fine. It's a choice, right? Um, but I wish that I hadn't done that to myself. And then um, probably putting corrosion block, uh, like a bow shield T9 on connections that are in lazarettes or at the aft of the boat and being more careful with drip loops. Uh, and condensation. Condensation, it's surprising where that happens. And especially if you don't have drip loops, you know, the condensation might actually end up following the wire right to the terminal blocks. And all your terminal blocks have to be tinned. They have to. They just have to. Don't do anything that's untinned. It's a waste of time. Uh, and all your connections, um, you know, when possible, again, always with heat shrink. I don't regret that. You know, there's some connections I did to myself and I thank myself. It's 15 years back. It's really, it's a conversation you have with yourself. You know, it's about past you to current you. And you're like, oh my God, thank God you did that. So that's one where I really joined the bandwagon really early about actually doing connections properly. And so that I'm not going to be encountering corrosion. The other thing too, that I never did, which, uh, but some people do never, ever buy welding wire. Now, of course, listen, if you can't afford go boating, get welding wire, don't stop yourself from boating because you can't afford the expensive stuff. Do what you have to to get on the water. And I get that. And I'm a big ad as long as it's safe. But given a choice, if you have the money, I would recommend actually buying tinned wire for your boat. Uh, not welding wire that is just copper and that many boat builders in the past used and many trade people still use, sadly. It's common. It, it, I understand it's a budget thing, right? But you know, if you can afford it, you'll thank yourself later. And that would be an investment. So those are top of the head, like just right off the head. What did I think about? Read the question. Here was my answer unscripted. Here's what I would do again if I was going to do my boat on the wiring. So thanks for asking this question. And thanks for all of you for your listen. If you haven't, please subscribe. That's how we know you're listening. And we love producing content for all of you. So thanks again for watching. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. 
um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.